Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss some of the basic uh, integration rules. So the first rule we're going to look at is a formula for the integral of 0 with respect to x. So when we're trying to integrate 0 with respect to x, we have to ask ourselves, what is a function whose derivative is 0, right, because we're going backwards? Well, that function would just be the constant function. Again, and the reason this is, is because if you take the derivative with respect to x, of a constant function, you get zero. So if you integrate zero, you should get back the constant function, right? We're anti-differentiating or integrating, so we're going backwards. The second formula uh, is a formula for the integral of a constant, which we'll call k, with respect to x. So you have to ask yourself again, what is a function whose derivative is k? Well, kx. And then we add our constant of integration c. You could check if you take the derivative of kx plus c, you just get k, right? The derivative of kx is k and the derivative of c is 0. Here is an example. So you see how this works. Let's say we have 2 and we want to integrate this. Well, again, what's a function whose derivative is 2? Well, 2x, and then we just add a constant. I just memorize it. Whenever there's a constant, you just put an x next to it. For example, say we had 3dx then you would just write that as 3x plus c. The next rule uh, we're going to look at is a very important one. It's called uh, the power rule. And it basically says, if you integrate x to a power with respect to x, this is equal to x. And so what you do is you add 1 in the exponent, and then you just divide by that number. And then you add c. And this formula is only valid if n is not equal to negative 1. You'll notice if n is equal to negative 1, you end up uh, dividing by 0. If you're curious, and this is a bit premature, um, if you have uh, negative 1, what happens is you get the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Uh, but this is later, right? Later on, uh, we will look uh, at this. For now, we just focus on the case where n is not equal to negative 1. Let's look at an example right away. So say we have to integrate uh, x squared uh, with respect to x. So in this case, we just simply add 1 to the exponent. So it'll be x to the 3. Then we just divide by that number again. So 3 plus c. And you can convince yourself that this works uh, by checking your answer. Um, if we take the derivative of this piece, we would get 3x squared, right, bringing the 3 down, over 3 plus 0. So this goes away, so you just get x squared, yep, checks, looks good, x squared. Say we had x to the fourth dx. Same thing, in this case we just add 1, so 4 plus 1 is 5. Then you just divide by 5, and then you add your constant of integration, c. The next rule says that if you have a constant times a function, um, you can pull the constant out. So say you have k f of x dx, and that's equal to k integral f of x dx. So you're allowed to pull constants out. Let's do an example of this, and we'll do two examples. We'll do the same example two different ways, just to illustrate a very, very, very key point. Let's just think about something simple. I don't know. How about x um, cubed dx? And let's put a 4 here. OK, so if we integrate this, OK, one way to do it is to pull out the constant. So we get 4, and then we get x cubed dx. So this is equal to, so first I'm going to show you the way that people don't do it. So this is 4, and it's 4 times all of this, right? So so it's 4, and then you integrate x cubed, so it's x to the 4 over 4, plus a constant of integration c. Right, you have parentheses here. You distribute the 4, so they cancel here, and then you get x to the 4th, and then 4 times c is 4c. So c could be any number. It's, it's called an arbitrary constant. We don't know what it is. So when you multiply it by 4, it could still be any number. You don't know what it is. So what you do is you call it something else. Let's call it C1. So that's what people don't do. So the way people actually do it, or one way to do it, is 
you pull out the 4, and then you have your integral symbol, dx. And you just don't worry about the parentheses, right? You just, you just integrate the x to the 4. So you write 4 x to the 4 over 4, and then you just add the c at the end, right? Because you know it's not going to matter anyways, because when it gets multiplied by 4, it's still arbitrary. So boom. So that's how people uh, typically do it. Another way to do it is not even pull out the 4, right? So here's another way to do it. I'll just do it again one more time. Total overkill. This is how I do it. If I don't feel like pulling out the number, I just leave it there. It kind of just hangs out. And then you just integrate this. And then you just add the C, right? That's the easiest way to do it. So you just get x to the fourth plus C. That's the way I would recommend doing it uh, when you're integrating. Um, and the last formula that we have that we'll discuss in this video um, tells us a formula for the sum or difference of uh, two functions, right? So the integral of f of x plus or minus g of x. This just basically says you can integrate each one. So this is the integral of f of x plus or minus the integral of g of x. And this just basically says that you can integrate um, stuff term by term. Let's look at a simple example. So say we're trying to integrate um, 2x plus 3 dx. This just means you integrate each piece. You don't have to write the integral symbol twice. You can just, again, just integrate each piece. So there's a 1 here. So this one's going to be 2x squared over 2, because you add 1, right? 1 plus 1 is 2, and you divide. And then 3, using the other formula, gives us uh, 3x. And then we have our plus c. So this will be equal to x squared. Whoops, that's a c, not a 6. x squared plus 3x plus c. And that would be the answer. Okay, so in the next video, uh, there will be more examples. That's it.